Imagine a frozen lake, a fishing rod, and a bucket of maple syrup. This is where Barnaby's hilarious adventure begins. In the heart of the Great White North Canada, our traveler, Barnaby Bumblethorpe, finds himself standing on a frozen lake. With a fishing rod in one hand and a bucket of maple syrup in the other, he's all set to experience the Canadian tradition of ice fishing. The maple syrup is not for the fish, but rather a good luck charm for our intrepid adventurer. However, Barnaby's sweet-smelling luck charm attracts a curious group of beavers. These furry critters, with their sharp teeth and industrious nature, mistake the bucket of maple syrup for a feast of tree sap. Seeing an opportunity for an easy meal, the beavers stage what we now call the Great Maple Syrup Caper. The beavers, with their tiny paws and twitching noses, launch their syrup heist, sending poor Barnaby into a tizzy. The frozen lake transforms into a comical chase scene as our hero Barnaby, slipping and sliding, tries to outpace the syrup-crazed beavers. The air fills with the sound of laughter, squeaking beavers and the rustling of leaves as Barnaby and his new furry friends create a spectacle on the ice. In a twist of fate, Barnaby manages to outwit the beavers. He quickly scoops up his bucket of syrup, leaving the beavers staring in confusion. His clothes are now a sticky mess and his laughter echoes across the lake. But Barnaby has his syrup and a fantastic tale to share. In the end, he manages to escape the syrup heist unscathed, save for a bit of stickiness. His encounter with the syrup-crazed beavers is now a part of the epic tale of his journey. With a spring in his step and a chuckle in his voice, Barnaby leaves the frozen lake, ready for the next chapter of his adventure. Barnaby manages to escape, sticky but unharmed, with a story to tell about his syrup-crazed beaver encounter. From the icy lands of Canada, Barnaby finds himself in the stunning landscapes of Ecuador, where he meets a mischievous llama named Fernando. The Andes Mountains stretch out before Barnaby, a magnificent panorama of rugged peaks and lush valleys. Eager to explore this beautiful terrain, Barnaby embarks on a unique expedition, llama trekking. With his new four-legged companions, Barnaby sets off into the wild, his spirit of adventure burning bright. Among the group of llamas, one stands out, a sprightly creature with a mischievous twinkle in his eye. This is Fernando, a llama with a penchant for pranks and a knack for making people laugh. As Barnaby poses for a selfie with Fernando against the backdrop of a breathtaking vista, the playful llama sees an opportunity for some fun. With a swift tug, Fernando unties Barnaby's pants. Before Barnaby can react, his pants are around his ankles, leaving him standing in his boxes in the middle of the Andes. The mountains echo with laughter as Barnaby Blushing crimson, scrambles to pull up his trousers. Even the llamas seem to be giggling, their soft hoots carried on the wind. Barnaby, however, is not one to be easily embarrassed. He laughs along, his chuckles mingling with the llama's hoots. Fernando, seemingly satisfied with his prank, gives Barnaby an almost apologetic nudge with his snout. Barnaby just shakes his head, a grin spreading across his face. The rest of the trek sees Barnaby and Fernando becoming fast friends, their laughter echoing through the mountains. They swap stories. Well, Barnaby talks and Fernando listens, occasionally interjecting with a well-timed hoot. It's a friendship born out of laughter, a bond forged in the heart of the Andes. Despite the initial embarrassment, Barnaby finds himself enjoying the trek more than he ever imagined. He learns that sometimes, the best adventures are the ones that catch you with your pants down. Quite literally, in this case. Despite the embarrassment, Barnaby spends the rest of the trek laughing and enjoying Fernando's company. In the end, it's not the stunning landscapes or the exhilarating trek that Barnaby remembers most about Ecuador. It's the laughter, the friendship, and a mischievous llama named Fernando. Next stop on Barnaby's journey is the vibrant land of Brazil, where the rhythm of samba music sweeps him off his feet, quite literally. As Barnaby steps into the Brazilian rhythm, he decides to take samba dancing lessons. With a heart full of excitement and a pair of dancing shoes, he steps onto the dance floor. The samba beat is infectious, its rhythm pulsating through the air, making even the most reluctant of feet tap along. Barnaby, however, is no reluctant dancer. 
He dives headfirst into the dance, letting the rhythm take control, but Barnaby isn't exactly gifted with the grace of a samba dancer. His enthusiasm far outweighs his coordination. With two left feet, he stumbles, trips, and twirls his way through the dance steps. He's a whirlwind of energy and misplaced footwork, causing a wave of laughter to ripple through the room. His unintentional comedic performance is met with cheers and applause, turning heads and drawing smiles from everyone around. The peak of his shenanigans arrives when, in a moment of complete disarray, Barnaby finds himself tripping over his own feet, but instead of a rough tumble, he lands on a passing parade float, joining the professional dancers in their vibrant carnival celebration. With a twirl here and a shake of the hips there, Barnaby embraces the unexpected twist, laughing and dancing along with the professionals. The crowd erupts into applause and laughter, cheering Barnaby on as he continues his impromptu performance. His lack of grace is easily overshadowed by his infectious enthusiasm and the joy he brings to those around him. He may not be the best dancer on the floor, but he certainly is the most entertaining. And so Barnaby, the clumsy traveler, becomes the life of the party. His hilarious dance fails not only amuse the crowd, but also highlight the essence of Brazil's carnival, a celebration of life, laughter, and the joy of dance. Despite his clumsy dance moves, Barnaby becomes the life of the party, proving that sometimes it's not about getting the steps right, but about enjoying the dance. From the lively streets of Brazil, Barnaby's adventure takes him to the mystical land of Peru, where he embarks on the famous Inca Trail. With unquenchable enthusiasm and an uncanny knack for finding himself in the most peculiar situations, Barnaby sets off on a journey towards the ancient Incan city of Machu Picchu. However, Barnaby's sense of direction isn't his strongest suit. With a compass that seems to have a mind of its own, our intrepid traveler takes a wild detour straight into the heart of the jungle. But fear not, for it's in this dense, vibrant wilderness that Barnaby encounters an unexpected band of helpers, a troop of mischievous monkeys. These playful primates, with their twinkling eyes and nimble limbs, seem to find Barnaby's predicament hilariously amusing. But they're not heartless. In fact, they decide to lend Barnaby a helping hand, or rather, a guiding tail. With their cheeky antics and acrobatic agility, they navigate Barnaby through the jungle, leading him on a path that's far from the beaten track, but rich with unexpected adventures and laughter. Barnaby finds himself swinging on vines, trying to keep up with his fast-moving guides. He plays hide-and-seek among the ruins of forgotten Incan structures, where the monkeys prove to be champions. He even learns a thing or two about jungle survival, although banana peeling techniques might not be particularly useful elsewhere. Through it all, Barnaby's journey becomes a whirlwind of hilarious escapades, with the jungle resonating with his laughter and the chattering of his new monkey friends. His unconventional detour turns out to be an unforgettable adventure, a testament to Barnaby's ability to turn mishaps into moments of joy. And so, after a day filled with jungle mayhem and monkey mischief, Barnaby finally arrives at the awe-inspiring Machu Picchu. He stands, panting but victorious, at the entrance of the ancient city. Accompanied by a troop of giggling monkeys, Barnaby has turned a simple hike into a grand adventure. Barnaby finally arrives at Machu Picchu with a troop of monkeys as his honorary jungle guides. For the grand finale of his adventure, Barnaby finds himself in the Dominican Republic, where he experiences a salsa sauce spill that leads to a hilarious turn of events. As the Caribbean sun sets over the vibrant city of Santo Domingo, Barnaby, our intrepid traveler, finds himself in the bustling heart of the local food scene. With an adventurous palate and an insatiable curiosity, he decides to try his hand at making salsa the Dominican Republic's famous hot sauce. Barnaby's enthusiasm, however, proves to be a bit too much for the delicate balance of ingredients. His vigorous stirring sends a wave of salsa sauce splashing out of the bowl, spilling all over him and the surrounding area. But Barnaby, 
ever the optimist, shrugs off the saucy mishap with a hearty laugh. Meanwhile, a local salsa dance competition is in full swing nearby. The lively music, the passionate dancers, and the infectious energy draw Barnaby towards the dance floor. The salsa sauce still dripping from his clothes, he decides to join the fun, dancing with the same gusto he used to stir the salsa sauce. As he twirls and spins to the rhythm of the salsa music, the sauce on his clothes flings off in all directions, creating a shower of salsa that rains down on the dance floor. The dancers, initially surprised, soon join in the laughter, turning the salsa sauce spill into an impromptu saucy dance party. The night ends with Barnaby covered in salsa sauce in the center of a cheering crowd, his infectious laughter echoing through the streets of Santo Domingo. His salsa sauce spill, initially a mishap, has transformed into a memorable laughter-filled evening and a testament to Barnaby's ability to turn any situation into an adventure. Barnaby's journey comes to an end, leaving him with unforgettable memories, hilarious stories, and a newfound appreciation for the unexpected twists and turns of traveling.